Um, okay. The next one is from, I, I don't, I'm probably going to mess up your name, is Gayton Osman. Hey, Ryan, I don't know if you've got time to read this, but I'll leave my comment in case you do. Just want to say that I'm a huge fan of your work. Thank you. For years, I've struggled with insecurities and the nice guy syndrome. I'm a model and I have played rugby league on a national level, but unfortunately this has done nothing to resolve my inner conflicts and how to approach women. I have created a virtual wall that shuts everyone out. Although I recognize this, I am still having a hard time to break this wall down. For me to write about this here is tough, but your videos are as close to anything I've ever read or seen on the internet to fix this. Could you tell me where to go from here? What would be the best course of action to take to get gears of change spinning again? Hope to be part of one of your workshops one day. You've no idea how many people you're helping with these videos. Well, thank you, I really appreciate that. Um, best course of action, in my opinion, is to actually get out to a workshop. I'm gonna say that straight out. For somebody that's really stuck, getting out to a workshop. Now, you've come to the realization that having great looks, because obviously you do or you wouldn't be a model, doesn't change anything. I've had a lot of students come in with that are phenomenal. I had one guy come in that was absolutely uh, incredible looking. I mean, I thought he was good looking and I'm not gay, but I was like, wow, look at this guy, six foot, like six foot four, chiseled jaw, the whole bit, the perfect voice. And he, and he still couldn't get a woman to save his life. All that changed. Um, and so what I want to do is talk a little bit about the nice guy syndrome in relation to what's going on with you and shutting people out. Um, the nice guy syndrome is born out of a sense of abandonment and usually inconsistent parenting where you're getting mixed signals something like this i'm not going to go into all the details of what bursts it if you want to understand a lot more about the nice guy syndrome um, read no more mr nice guy by robert glover okay um if you want to understand what you're growing out of the nice guy syndrome into read way of the superior man by david data that's what we're teaching is how to become more third stage now in the nice guy you're climbing out of second stage that David Data talks about, and there's first stage. We're, for, we're, we're moving. You're moved away from. In the first stage, it's my way or the highway. I'm I'm in charge. It's a man who doesn't have much connection to to feeling, but he's got a lot of connection to his attention skills. Tension, stepping in attention, making shit happen, and he tries to control everything through force. That's his power. And in the second stage you go into the nice guy center that's when you first start to develop your ability to feel you start to develop your vulnerability this is your feminine side and what happens is you become hypersensitive to emotions because you you've, this is all new to to men around the world really as we're going through this evolution we're going from caterpillar to cocoon to, to butterfly in a sense a masculine butterfly but a butterfly uh, and what happens is in the second stage, that's nice guy, that's the cocoon stage. We're a little bit of a mess. If you've ever seen a butterfly, it kind of turns into goo and then it rebuilds, or goes from caterpillar into goo and then it rebuilds. So we're a little bit of a mess. Um, and then we rebu it rebuilds itself in the cocoon into this butterfly. So what I want to say is that you are in that second stage. It's not a bad thing because you're developing your ability to feel and you're walling people off because of your ability to feel you're walling people off because you're probably feeling too much so i want to invite you into this idea that this sensitivity that you're developing you don't want to get rid of it you want to contrast it by bringing back your grounding your masculine your ability to walk into emotions and deal with them so an example of this is that a man in the first day just really good at walking into tension. Go take, in combat, let's say a soldier or a Navy SEAL, go take that machine gun on the hill. And he's, he's gonna go right into the tension of dealing with that life or death situation. A fireman, a police officer, a construction worker working on a high rise, you know, things like this. This is the masculine domain, dealing with tension. Car crash, run out there, help people. In the second stage, we are also dealing with tension, but we're dealing with the tension of vulnerability. It's a little different. We're not dealing with a life-threatening situation like like a, a fire or a car crash or a combat or something like that, building. Um, we're dealing with emotions. So let's say you take that same soldier 
who's really, maybe he's a special force of soldier, and we say, approach that beautiful girl at the bar. He might say, what? No, I'm not doing that. Why? And why would he do that? Because approaching her means he has to deal with her emotions. And she's going to poke at him and prod him and test him, and she's going to play with him. And he can't use physical force on her. He has to play in the land of emotions now. He has to step into those emotions. He has to feel her emotions. He has to listen to her emotions. He has to process her emotions. He has to. And that's fucking, you know, that, that's fucking hard work for a guy like that, right? That hasn't developed emotional capacity. I'm not saying this, there are plenty of people in that field that probably can do this, I'm sure. Um, I'm just saying in general for somebody that hasn't developed the other side. So that's hard work. That's scary shit for a lot of guys. Stepping right into all those emotions, feeling the pain, the nervousness, like, what if she doesn't like me? What if she does like me? What if she challenges me in a certain way? What about all these subtle, tiny little emotions she's shooting at me? Turn on curiosity, teasing, push pull energy, playful. That's, that's all going on. It's a much subtler dance. It's very subtle dance. So what we're learning to do in the third stage is bring back the masculine from the first stage, but now using it not to just ground tension, tense situations, you know, uh, the combat, the fire, or whatever it is. But we're now learning to use it to ground emotions, sadness, loneliness, hurt, joy, turn on, curiosity, teasing, playing. And we're learning to step into it. We're not becoming like women. This is the mistake men make in the second stage. In the second stage, we become, we lose our groundedness because we, to our emotions and we become kind of needy. And it's like, oh, please love me. You know, I, I miss you. Come back. We can work it out. And there's this needy kind of cry because we don't know how to handle all these emotions. But when we hit that third stage, we start learning to reactivate that part of ourselves that can ground all this tension our ancestors that could handle all the masculine stuff that they had to deal with but now we're using it to ground emotion we're not becoming needy we're stepping into it and saying stuff like and this is literally paraphrase i don't remember the words i used many years ago about 10 years ago i said to a woman um i miss you because we'd broken up we'd been broken up for a while and it was a short relationship but i really liked her and she'd been pulling away and so I went up to her and somebody told me to do this. The first time I did this and it scared the shit out of me. And I said, I have to talk to you. And she was like, what? Blah, blah, blah. She's running around busy. She almost trying to avoid me. And I said, no, no, wait. I want to tell you something. It's important. And then she got it. I saw her mic. What? And she turns, looks at me. She was by her car, turns off the car, looks at me, goes, what? And she challenged me right there, right in the middle of the emotion. And I knew that was it. That was the moment that I was going to step into the tension. Now, I was scared to do this. I didn't think it was going to work. Um, so what I said was, I miss you, or something to that effect. I can't remember the exact words. I'm moving away soon. I may never see you again. So I'm going to, I want to say this before I end up leaving. I miss you. I want to work it out. And if you don't feel the same way, that's fine. I can handle it. I'm a man. But if you do, I want to make sure I say this before I leave. You're beautiful. And I just sat there in the tension and I didn't move. I didn't, I didn't ask her. I didn't get needy. I didn't say, please, let's fix this. Come on, we can work it out. I just sat there. And in that, I saw her mind tick. You know, she gives that little look. She looks to see if you're going to break. And then boom, she opened up. We started talking. And we ended up talking for 45 minutes sitting out on the sidewalk on the curb behind her car that night and it was amazing that was my first experience with really stepping into and grounding emotional tension like that and I began to realize the power of it you're built to do this guys you just don't know it yet it's the next evolution of the masculine but first you have to go through this stage of being able to deal with emotions now coming back to the first part the nice guy is constantly what you're doing is constantly trying to help everybody nice 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 overloading because he's taking on too much and then running away and hiding and walling off never really even when he's going forward letting anybody in when he's out helping everybody he's racing too fast to let anybody in here let me do this for you let me do that okay i'll be there he's not stopping to be present with anybody and then when he gets overloaded he disappears for a week a month whatever he takes whatever long it takes 
and he hides in his cave. Again, disconnecting from people. The connection happens when all that stops. That's the noise on top. It's a polarity. It's a dance from from helping too much, to pulling away, to helping too much, to pulling away, to helping too much, to pulling away. And you're stopping that dynamic. So for you, Osman, it's about stopping that dynamic. And I would recommend reading those books. And you're going to have to get in touch with the part of yourself that's being overly nice and get in touch with the part of yourself that's pulling away. And you're gonna have to start to break these patterns and get under the surface and get real like I did, learning to ground even yourself. You're gonna start with yourself. The part of yourself that wants to race to avoid any real emotion and the part of yourself that wants to avoid, run away to avoid any real emotion. You're gonna have to ground all of that, Osman. And it's really important, okay? So read the book again, No More Mr. Nice Guy and um, uh, Way of the Spear Man and kind of look at it from this perspective. You're breaking this cycle up and you have to get an awareness of it. I would actually journal when you're saying yes when you don't want to all the time and start to do a practice of saying no and, when, and, and literally go out to practice saying no to people. Go out and try saying no, just little no's throughout the day, and then write down the experience of no. I'm setting a boundary right here, but not running away, not leaving, not saying no, and I'm going to go hide in my cave for a week, but saying no, I'm going to just be present with you. I'm still going to hang out with you. No, I can't do that, but stay, keep, in a sense, keeping your heart open, keeping your, 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 your emotional vulnerability there. That's one. Uh... Number two, um, I want you to, when you do find yourself disconnecting, as quick as you can, start reconnecting. Connect faster each time. So I don't want you to disconnect, okay? So I want you to reconnect as soon as you can. Pull out your journal and journal about that. You know, I disconnected, I found myself avoiding for the last few days, and here's what I'm gonna do to reconnect. And start reconnecting to people. Because what you're most afraid of is the emotion. And then learning to ground. Because you're going to have to ground those emotions. You're going to have to do processes where you're working with your legs, with your body, learning to ground. Uh, whether you're doing that through yoga, grounding happens through the legs, through the feet, almost like a rooting system. Imagine roots into the ground, energy running up and down your legs. We don't have time to go into all that in this video, but I'm going to put that down. as it will, Maybe we'll do a video on grounding practices here in the future too. So learning to ground. There's lots of re ref material out there on grounding um, and lots of great information. Even getting into stuff like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, Sistema, if you've got any really good Sistema teachers, which is a Russian martial art, they teach grounding really well. Uh, judo teaches grounding really well. So these are martial arts that teach grounding. Um, and uh, I don't have, you know, I don't, yoga I know teaches grounding. I don't know which yoga would be the best, but they, they teach it from the, the, the posture kind of situation. What I like about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and, yo, and uh, Sistema is they teach it from a physical perspective. Now that's physical grounding, but then now you have to apply it to emotion. Same principle. Okay.